Hey guys, how's it going today? Griffy Bit here, and today we're doing another episode of Unit Rundown. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of the newer classes, known as the Vampire. So let's get down into it. I hope you guys have been having that juicy, sweet, good grind on that Stream Raiders. Possibly maybe some of that stream pirates. Today, if you're new to the channel, how we do this is we start off with the intro, then go to basics, specializations, where to place, pros and cons, my personal opinion, and then the rating out of 10. So, let's get started with the Vampire. The Vampire is considered an armored class, but it's actually a hybrid unit. It's flying, and it that has lands for 2 seconds per each attack, and heals itself for 15% of its health with every kill or assisted kill in exchange for not being able to be healed by conventional means, such as a healer or a monk. The stats go a little something like this, so the roll is armored. Its attack range is 1, its attack speed is 1.3, and as we talk in our other videos, its attacks per second. The move speed is 1, so that's a tile per second, and it can target flying. On the epic version, however, everything stays the same. So no matter what, if you're doing epic or non-epic, the only thing you're really increasing is the base health and the base damage. For the milestone abilities, level 1 is on each attack will give adjacent vampires, so that's next to them, a healing for 4 HP, which goes off every 2 seconds and it has 2 procs. If you kill somebody with a vampire, you'll give 4 HP to the, to the vampires right next to you for 2 seconds and they will give 2 procs. So 4 seconds in total, that will give you 8 HP. For level 5, that goes from 7 HP, level 10 goes to 10 HP, level 20 goes to 14 HP, and level 30 gives that juicy 20 HP. That's a really, really solid milestone if you have other vampires. It has a super, super simplified attack priority. It just targets anybody closest to it. And believe it or not, this is one of the only units other than the flying rogue that actually has the ability to path through every single unit because it's in fact a flying unit. Now, before we jump into specialization, since this is a newer unit, there is going to be room for controversy that depends which specialization is the best. So for this video and this video only, I'm going to go off my personal opinion, what I currently think is the best vampire specialization, which you should pick. Um, of course, other opinions are going to change, but for this video, this is what I chose. So let's start off with the Grand Vampire. Now the Grand Vampire is whenever you kill a unit, it buffs allied vampires in a 3 AoE for 30% more damage lasting 5 seconds and increases your range by 0.3. So it would go from 1.3 to 1.6. And for the Epic version, it does not change. For Vengeful Vampire, on death, casts a debuff on all enemies in a 3 AoE range which does 4 damage every half second 15 times, and it also increases the range by 0.3. Vengeful, it sounds good on paper, it looks good, but it's actually not because it goes 15 times every half second, but realistically, nobody lasts that long, so that debuff is not going to benefit, and you'll actually end up losing DPS. I know we're talking about DPS on an armored class, but like we said, this is a hybrid if you would look at this in an MMORPG setting, if you guys have ever played WoW or anything like this, you would have a main tank and an off tank in a raid. Well, for this instance, vampire is not considered a main tank. That would be like a paladin or a centurion. A vampire would be considered an off tank, so he could still take brunt force, but he can't take the main force. For the epic version of Vengeful, it goes to 6 damage every half second 15 times. So what I mean by half second 15 times is that every half second it's going to proc once and it has 15 procs. It's going to be procking all 15 times within 7.5 seconds. That is how that debuff works. If a unit lasts longer than 7.5 seconds, you're probably going to lose the map. Now we got the creme la creme, we got the one that we want. This is the one that I personally suggest for you guys if you're going to be playing Bloodlust Vampire. Now, Bloodlust Vampire, after killing an enemy, both its attacks and move speed are increased by 30% for 5 seconds. Kills heal for an additional 23 HP and increase the range by 0.3. On the epic version, however, it increases that to 51 HP per heal. That 
is massive. You think, well, if a vampire dies too fast, then bloodlust is useless. Correct, but if any unit dies, it's useless. If you can have bloodlust be able to proc, by the way, vampires actually have a decent amount of damage once they start getting up in levels. If you can keep this going, you can actually make a bloodlust vampire absolutely disgusting. I've been testing it, I've been trying it, I actually, most of my units that I play revolve around playing a bloodlust vampire just because they can do so much damage and just keep on going. For an armored tank, it's actually bonkers. Now, where do we want to place our chonky vampire? Where does he want to be? Well, if we go on all our other videos, by the way, if you have not checked out the other videos, all the links are in the description below, let me go check out the channel. We discuss how we have tanks in the front, melee on the sides, range in the back, and supports right behind the tanks, you would kind of want this as the same deal as, for instance, a Master Centurion or a Champion Paladin. You want them behind their tanks or off to the side of the tanks because you want to take off the smaller packs with your Vampire. Your smaller vamp the smaller packs with your Vampire, if it's Bloodlust, can actually take out the whole pack while keep on regening. And if you have multiple Bloodlust Vampires, you can actually make this really good. But as we said before, you don't want them right in the middle taking up the giant group that is going to be attacking your army for the sole reason that there's just too much damage going out and they won't be able to have the self-sustain the self to be able to continue going with that pack. In order to counteract that, you would want them off to the sides or right behind your tanks. Now that we're done explaining all that good juicy content, now let's go over the pros and cons. Now, and like our other videos, I'll do about points of pros and five points of cons so you can decide if vampire is actually what you want to choose and see what path you want to go for and use them consistently. Pros. It is not stopped at all by pathing. It's a flying unit, so it can fly over most things and considering walls as well. A pack of vampires together is actually disgusting. So if you have multiples in a pack, you can see incredibly amount of regen and not requiring healers or monks. It has a good amount of base damage, for a armored unit. It's considered one of the only hybrid classes in the game. And epic versions and non-epic versions can both target flying. Now let's go on to the cons. Cons. It says it's an armor class, but it's not an armored class. It can't take the brunt force. It has no defense towards melee damage or range damage, so it's completely dependent on its health pool. If you can't get that bloodlust to continue going, you're gonna see your vampire end up dropping quite quickly. So although they are flying units, they do have a problem when it comes to pathing because most times when you have a flying unit, it can, since it can fly over any unit and fly over walls, if the priority is there, it will end up flying over the wall and being solo on itself, which will cause for an easy kill. You cannot find this in the shop unless you are doing dungeons. You have to be locked into dungeons or else you can't level it up. You can play in campaign, but you can only get one scroll per. Let's talk about my personal opinion about the vampire. Honestly, I feel like a lot of people are sleeping on this unit. I find this unit to be absolutely fantastic, but it's the same as the bomber. It must require level 20 and it must be epic. Epic units are best, especially because it doesn't have the melee reduction or it doesn't have the range reduction as other armored units. It must require to be epic for that higher health pool. You need that health pool in order to take a couple of hits before you can actually get that bloodlust proc off. I love this unit. This unit is absolutely fantastic. I use it all the time. I've beaten people using a full vampire strat in PvP, so that means it's not completely valid in PvP. It's the, it's the level that is the biggest problem. If you can't level up to level 20, then it's basically deemed useless. It's a weak armored class. It has bad pathing because of the flying, because it just attacks anybody with its target priority that's closest to it. I've got nothing to say bad about it. I mean, it, besides the small points there, if you follow Bloodlust and just keep on making sure it's epic whenever you place it, then you got yourself a really solid unit. Not to mention, if you put them all in a group and just send them out, the regen is absolutely insane. You're going to lose, yeah, a couple of vampires here and there, but if you have two epic vampires, uh, we've tested this a lot of times. Shoutouts to Weasel Stampede for always placing that epic vampire so I can place mine. If you have two epic bloodlust vampires together, then what ends up happening is you can push that whole front line all the way and still see both vampires coming out of top, coming some of the most kills, and still staying alive. 
which is absolutely fantastic. So what are we going to rate the vampire out of 10? I'm not going to give it a super high rating because, you know, there's a lot of criteria for it to actually succeed. Considering it's not that great in PvP, it's lackluster in dungeons, it's decent and it's actually really good in campaign. Um, you have to meme strat in PvP and vampires, the problem is, is you can only level them up in dungeons. Uh, so you're locked to low-level vampires for a very long time. All of that considered, all in all, I'd give it a 7 out of 10. Now, you're saying 7 out of 10 is still pretty high, but you got to realize that SR tried something different here. They tried to make a hybrid class. They tried to make it work. They tried to make it as beneficial as possible, so you can just nothing but respect of it for trying something new. But at the same time, it actually has a lot of pluses to it, and that's why I'm saying people are sleeping on this class, because if it's placed correctly, placed right, and placed with other vampires, you're going to see a great thing. But remember, it would be 8 or 9 if it didn't require level 20 and didn't require you to epic it. Final score, 7 out of 10. Anyways, guys, that has been today's video of SR Unit Rundown. And I thought we had tackled something a little bit more difficult, something a little bit more controversy, uh, because, you know, there, there's going to be uh, a lot of people disagree with possibly with the vampire being good or having a 7 out of 10 rating, or some people would prefer to be higher. I mean, you could express that feeling in the comments section below. If you guys are truly interested and do really enjoy this uh, series or the, just the videos on my channel in general, make sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell so you would know when a next video is coming live. And uh, while you're at it, while I'm plugging myself in, check me out on Twitch. I do a lot of stream raider battles. I do a lot of stream pirates. Currently, the alpha is going right now as I'm making this video. And also, we do a little bit of Legends of Eidolon, which is uh, we're creating a community guild there. So uh, we're making the itty bitty army a giant guild. So, if you guys want to join that, we got to grow the itty bitty army so it ain't so itty bitty anymore. Anyway, I've been your stream camp for today. My name is Griffy Bit, proud owner of the itty bitty army, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.